This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Diane Roberts. Post-earthquake questions in Turkey have turned to nuclear power plants. AP correspondent Charles de la Desma has more. The devastating quake that toppled buildings across parts of Turkey and Syria has revised a long-standing debate locally and in neighboring Cyprus about a large nuclear power plant being built on Turkey's southern Mediterranean coastline. The plant's being designed to endure powerful tremors and did not sustain any damage or experience powerful ground shaking last Monday. But the size of the quake, the deadliest in Turkey's modern history, is sharpening existing concerns about the facility being built on the edge of a major fault line. I'm Charles de la Desma. At a joint news briefing with Turkey's foreign minister, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg describes the powerful earthquake that struck Turkey as the military alliance's worst natural disaster. Today I have come to show my solidarity following the devastating earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria last week. This is the deadliest uh, natural disaster on alliance territory since the foundation of uh, NATO. Ukrainian officials say Russia has again pummeled the country with a barrage of missiles, firing a combination of 36 crews and other missiles and losing at least 16 of them to Ukrainian air defense batteries. The head of Ukraine's presidential office says targets had been hit in the country's north, west and south. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said the United States was ready to defend the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania if required and will keep its military presence in the region. He was speaking after talks with Estonian leaders, and he said the U.S. will continue to keep a persistent rotational military presence. This is VOA News. AP correspondent Jennifer King reports U.S. President Joe Biden is getting a medical exam today amid questions about his abilities as the oldest president ever at 80 years old. During Biden's last known physical in 2021, a neurological exam found nerve damage to his hands and feet, spinal arthritis, and compensation for a broken foot that caused him to walk more cautiously. He underwent a colonoscopy in which a benign appearing polyp was identified and removed. In July, the president caught COVID-19 and the White House said he had very mild symptoms. Asked in a recent interview about his age and ability to be president, Biden replied with what's become his stock line, watch me, it's all I can say. Reuters says U.S. President Joe Biden plans to give a speech as early as Thursday that will represent his most extensive remarks yet about a high-altitude Chinese balloon and three other objects recently shot down by U.S. fighter jets. President Biden has been under pressure from lawmakers to speak more extensively about the flyovers by unidentified objects. A spokesperson for China's foreign ministry said Thursday the United States should work with China to manage differences over the balloon that flew into U.S. airspace. The head of the Environmental Protection Agency will visit a village in the U.S. state of Ohio Thursday where toxic chemicals spilled and a train derailment. Last night, residents of East Palestine, Ohio, and nearby communities packed a school gym hoping to get answers about whether they're safe from the toxic chemicals that spilled or were burned off. State officials insist, insist that testing has shown that the local air is safe and that air and water monitoring would continue. A deadline to hand in old banknotes after a shortage in the new bills prompted long queues and angry scenes at banks ahead of a parliamentary and presidential election next week in Nigeria. More from David Doyle of Reuters. Nigerians have been given more time to hand in their old banknotes after cash shortages prompted angry scenes. With presidential and parliamentary elections next week, President Mohamedou Buhari gave approval on Thursday for a deadline to be extended by 60 days. The central bank decided last year to circulate newly designed 1,500 and 200 Naira notes. But the new bills have been in short supply. That's led to long queues and chaotic scenes at banks. The deadline to turn in old notes had already been extended once to February the 10th. Nigerians now have until April 10th. And this is how it sounds in Lebanon where several dozen protesters attacked banks in a Beirut neighborhood Thursday while blocking roads protesting against informal restrictions. This is VOA News. 
please subscribe, like, or comment. Thank you.